Hello there, welcome everybody. Today we're playing as Japan, and for a lot of reasons that I won't get into in this video, Japan is one of, if not the best country to play as in Vanilla Hearts of Iron 4, and this mod here might be one of the most fun mods for this most fun country. It looks very good, and today we will play it and see if it holds up. It has some fun focus art, as you can see here. And also, this isn't just a Japan overhaul mod, it's an East Asia overhaul mod. So China has been overhauled too. Manchuko has been given a path though where they can become Japan. I know it sounds crazy, but I guess in a situation where Japan changes ideologies or gets conquered, they can become Japan and conquer Japan, which isn't the first time I've seen that in a mod, but it is kind of cool. But this does look like one of the better executed versions of that. Either way, here's the Japanese focus tree. It's very big and we'll be doing the historical route today, though there is a lot of new stuff, so it's not just the boring historical route. I'm pretty sure it's this one. They, they changed the name of it so it's not Purge the Kadoha Faction. It can't be this one because this is the communist one, and it can't be Support the Kadoha Faction because that involves not purging it probably, and it's not the democratic one. Yeah, it looks like at the end what we do is we form the Pan-Asian Unitary State. So I assume we're going to get a lot of cores by doing that, maybe. We could also just become a navy country, but we don't have any cool formable nation. See, maybe if we could have formed like the navy empire, I would have done it, but no. There is a lot in this mod though. I would love to do something like playing as Menchuko and forming Japan or doing one of the other Japan routes. There are a lot of different paths and sub paths for each of the paths. So guys, if the video gets 2,500 likes, we'll make a part two where we play one of the other paths paths. Don't worry, I won't end this one on a cliffhanger, maybe, probably. I just might make another playthrough on this mod. And like I said too, I really do like playing Japan, so I'm very incentivized to do it. Of course, as Japan, we will want to take over China as fast as possible to start building compliance there. That makes us very powerful and able to deal with the other powers. In vanilla, AI Japan has become a lot less overpowered. It used to always capitulate China, but now it's a lot more realistic where it will get stuck in China and China will continue to resist and then Japan will eventually, their empire will fall apart. Though of course if you're decent at the game that won't happen to a player. We'll see though how hard it is to take China. It's very very easy in vanilla. It's very important here and in vanilla that you take all of the forces of your puppets. For some reason in this mod our puppet has 48 divisions, which is an absurd amount. That's kind of crazy, honestly. That's more divisions than we have. So yeah, in this mod, it's even more important that you steal those divisions because if you don't, they'll do stupid things with them. And yeah, there's already a war going on up here. Sinking, I assume, is going to unify this region before we attack. A kind of unfortunate thing I noticed, though, is to declare on China, we need 750,000 manpower in the field, which I'd prefer not to have to muster, but it's not too big of a deal. We'll just have to train about 24 new divisions or so. We'll see though. It's an interesting route to declare on China too, because what we have to do is complete this power struggle focus. Then doing this unlocks this tree down here. And then we have to decide whether to basically go after Russia, kind of finishing up the Russo-Japanese war or going after China. I would like to to do both, of course, in this playthrough, but we don't need a focus tree to declare on people, so once we finish up everything, maybe we can go in that direction regardless. And we do have parts of the vanilla focus tree hidden in here. Like this is the middle branch from the vanilla focus tree. The sides have just been greatly expanded. But yeah, we can still get our free factories, go on to war economy, get our research slots. The focuses are changed a bit though. They aren't the exact same as the vanilla ones. Either way, we'll still start going down this branch a little bit like I usually do in vanilla and then we will start going down the China thing. They also changed up the political tab a bit here as you can see. Trade unions, elections, immigration, censorship, and then we have balance of power between army and navy. Very fun. And Xinjiang is unifying. Germany is doing their civil war which is bad for us because it removes a potential ally that we'll have in the future because if Germany goes their neutrality route, they aren't really going to work with us. They're just going to demand Qingdao 
now or even take it before we get it and then we'll have to attack them for it later. And then if they go democratic they're probably just gonna work with these other guys. It also seems like we have a lot more manpower here in this mod. I don't know if there's just some recruitable population thing. It looks like this here is what's giving it. Though regardless it puts us in a nice position because now we can do this national defense state focus which like in vanilla gives us total mobilization but here it also gives us extensive conscription and because of the extra conscription we have from that national spirit we won't have to waste our time doing this spiritual mobilization focus right after which usually you have to do so instead we will just do national defense state and then we can do power struggle and then go down to the Marco Polo bridge incident and we have an amazing political advisor here minus 5% consumer goods and then plus 10% civilian factory construction speed. I'll take it, though as Japan it's not a good idea to really build civilian factories. You're usually fine to just build military ones from the start, but I kind of like having a better civilian industry before um, attacking the allies. And here too we have some additional content. In vanilla you just have the Manchurian project to develop, of course, Manchuria. But here we also have the Korean project and the Mongol project. So to do this one we have to have an independent Korean which I don't know if I want to give them their independence just to do these focuses. It looks like it gives them seven factories, so it could maybe be worth it to give them the seven factories and then re-annex them because there are barely any factories in this land right now. But I don't know if that's worth the trouble. We are going on to total mobilization from this focus. We have a unique economy law here, Japanese war economy. It's better than normal war economy, but not really as good as total total mobilization. And we have some special events to set up the rivalry between the navy and army as we do this power struggle focus. I think I'll favor the army on that one, but I want to keep things balanced today. But we'll try not to favor them too much. And two, we're at a great 4% consumer goods. Very nice. Okay, we're now led by a group of people at the classic Hearts of Iron 4 table there. It is a beautiful table. Many amazing leaders have sat at it. Oh, okay. I think I found a good way to solve our war support problem. Problem. It's by going on to press nationalize, which is very, very powerful for only 5% more political power and 1% more consumer goods. We can get a permanent plus 0.3 stability and war support every week, or I guess only plus 0.2 from where we currently are, but still that's kind of crazy. Maybe that'll have some other secret negative consequence, but if it doesn't, then that is very overpowered. Now I'm very unfortunate, this is such a tease. I thought we would be able to become feminist imperial Japan, but unfortunately we're not allowed to because of our ideology. Also, because of the political path we did, kind of leaning towards the army, we now have political advisor slots that can be filled with the generals, so in addition to all of these other military high command guys, we can add military buffs in our political advisors tab too. I feel like this is going to make us very powerful in the long run. And I don't know if this is the case here in this mod, but I'm going to do what you should always do in vanilla and build at least one airbase and a port here. Like, I don't know if this is going to be such a big deal in this mod specifically, but we'll do it just in case. It's best to do it now than get into the war and have no supply and have air superiority issues. Yeah, and unfortunately too, because of the German and Italian civil wars, the tripartite pact will not be a thing so we won't really have an option to be too historical here. Also yeah sadly we won't be doing the normal quality over quantity strategy that you would see as Japan to fight China. We've kind of been forced here to deploy a lot of fielded divisions. We still can't even do this focus. We don't have enough guns to field these last few units. Okay and they refused and so we get war goals against these three factions and we declare war on China. We're not at war with all of China. China, though, so we might have to do some manual cleaning up later on. Okay, and one of them already capitulated, which is weird. I'm not usually used to this as Japan having taken all this territory so fast. I usually play the long game and slowly make naval invasions along the coast until China's too weak to deal with them all, but I guess now maybe we're just gonna go for it. Day one battle planning. Nice, look at this. We have a cool little graphic to see the greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere. Like the home islands are secured, 
it, but then all this area is contested. Also, these railroads aren't connected to the ports, so that's kind of annoying. I guess that's why we're having such a supply problem. Okay, and that was much more difficult than the vanilla one. It kind of seemed like it would be easier at first, but they did have a lot more divisions than China usually has in vanilla, so it wasn't very straightforward. Wait, why does Austria have this flag? Also, Alf has a wargle against us. I don't think he's going to declare on us, though. I think he's just being weird. Okay, and we're kind of finishing up our consolidation of China. The one China that's going to be immune to us, though, is the Guangxi clique. They're guaranteed by Britain and Germany. I guess they're their focus tree. They're doing annoying things. It's also kind of hard to break into this China. They have a lot of divisions. I was not quite expecting that. And Siam accepts our ultimatum and becomes a puppet. Okay, so I had to bait them out of their capital because they had 300,000 manpower worth of divisions in that one urban tile. Yeah, that wasn't going well. I think they'll finally get pushed out now. We just needed to make them think they had hopes of reclaiming the rest of their land. I should note too, this mod does add a lot of new states. For example, in vanilla, there are only two states in Korea. In this mod, there are probably 10. Also, we don't have cores on Korea, which has been kind of problematic and it's kind of annoying, but it's not the end of the world. We're still doing pretty fine right now. We also have another cool focus to demand that the Himalayan kingdom submit to us. So maybe we can avoid some wars there. Yeah, so fun times in the world right now. Switzerland is trying to take over the world like they often do in the new update. They do have an alliance though with Venice and Ethiopia. So maybe they have a chance. Tibet and Bhutan both you know, decided to become our puppets, but Nepal resisted, so we're going to attack them. I don't know how difficult it'll be because Nepal actually has a big army, so we'll see. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be easy. You never really know because since they have so much fielded manpower, you would assume they could maybe hold on to this mountain tile forever, but yeah, that's not going well. And yeah, we're going to start justifying war on Burma and then we will go into India. India has about the same amount of fielded manpower as Nepal, so they're not really a threat right now. Also, to take over the Indies, we're going to try to diplomatically get it. I don't know why you would just do the puppet war goal thing. I think it's obviously a better idea to try diplomacy and then you can just declare if they say no. Okay, and Poland too joined Switzerland, but they also gave up all of Eastern Poland to the Soviets for free. And fate of the Indies, now let's just annex them. It even gives us a nice compliance bonus, so we'll be able to build up compliance fast. On a side note, the mod is a little overpowered, so we have infinite political power stability and more support now. I'll also too design a new ship. I've built a lot of new dockyards so we can start actually producing a lot of ships. Burma joined the United States's, well technically Switzerland's faction that now includes the United States. Oh well, I guess now we can invite Italy to our faction. Yeah, I don't think the event to demand the Philippines will work anymore though, so yeah. We're just going to have to move on. We'll start preparing to invade the US. We'll get military access through Mexico. We will send 24 divisions right into Mexico. Yes, we're truly evil. <laughs> and here it is. The Germans demand the return of their port. Um, yeah, I don't really want to do that, so no. I would have done it if there was an option to make them revoke their guarantee, but unfortunately, Hoi 4 isn't that dynamic. Okay, India joined a faction with what is this? Hungary and Canada. Yeah. Italy's invading the Philippines. That's great. Good job, Mussolini. I don't know why you're in the Philippines, but that's cool. You and MacArthur can have some duel over there. Anyways, I trained 45 new 40 widths to send over to Mexico as my present to America. We love America. We can't wait to own it ourselves. The America might not be on this cool map, but it is a part of the co-prosperity sphere. It's just very, very far East Asia. I guess this is kind of funny, but we could invade Ethiopia. It's very possible. I don't know if I really care to do that though. I don't think they're a major, so it probably will just be a waste of time. It also might be nice to take out US bases so they can't convoy raid us as much. Actually, looking at the Mexican front 
front, I'm not too worried about the US convoy raiding us for much longer. Though Mexico is kind of losing on their southern front, so we might have to redirect divisions down there so they don't capitulate. Okay, and the age-old alliance between Great Britain and Portugal is back as Portugal invades the Spanish Empire. Yeah, and considering what's going on on the mainland, the US isn't really garrisoning these islands all that well. Unfortunately though, it looks like France joined them, so now we're going to have to capitulate France too. Hopefully Germany helps us out there. Yes, Franklin Delano Roosevelt has given us the Philippines. Despite being at war with America, Franklin has decided to give us the Philippines back. He also, I guess, beat Alf and became president again. Kind of forgot about the fact that France owns all of this here. Yeah, we'll deal with that. Good, and Germany declared on France. I also remembered that we have Italy in our faction, but there's one problem. For some reason, Britain owns this, so there's a weird buffer state between Italy and France. I guess they're kind of attacking up here a little bit. And they're done. Yay, we now have the Japanese protectorate of America. We have Japanese Belgium, which is in the Congo. I don't know about that one. I don't know about this. I probably should have satellited Cambodia and Vietnam and not made this terrible Japanese France thing. Maybe Italy will give this territory to Japanese France. Mussolini also wanted to own New York. That's good. We should withdraw from the continent altogether. Yeah, I don't think we should withdraw from the continent right now. That's not a good idea. Okay, the Reorganize America focus did some weird things. They're now called the CSA. I don't know why. They're led by the prince. Why this is the case, why they're called this, I have no clue. But I think this is going to be the end for now. I've had fun. This is a cool mod. Maybe...